Buongiorno again, Ferrari car fans. Uh, model Ferrari car fans, that is. So we have another MY64 here. I've been very pleased with this brand so far. Nothing majorly wrong from these guys. In general, they're pretty good models, if not perfect. So this is uh, the Ferrari 250 GTO, serial number 3223 GT. That's the chassis of this particular car, and it appeared at the 62 Salon Geneva press version. Hmm. All right. Not many photos. This car has had a very colorful history, it seems, and has been repainted many a time. Uh, but here we have a blurb of this chassis number. In late 1961, this is the very first 250 GTO ever built. It was used by Ferrari until 1962, and then sold off, of course. And you can read the rest of that stuff as, as you wish. Uh, I'm going to close these out. So here's some different liveries this chassis has worn. Fog lights, this little white thing going on there, a racing stripe there, and then here we finally have the livery of this model. And that was just a bad day of racing. But there's a GT40 here, it looks like. I don't know, maybe that, is that a GT40? Maybe it's not, I don't know, it looks like one. Let's uh, get this thing open. Alright. Okay, so some tape. An acrylic base, it looks like. That's what that splotchiness is there. It's acrylic glue. And that's the wrong side I opened, of course. So it's a resin model. So it's going to look fantastic. It's not going to roll. It's not a toy. It doesn't have opening panels. It's it's a wisely designed thing that just is supposed to sit still and look fantastic, like a piece of art. It's not to be played with. Um, it's going to have a lot of sensitive parts. So there's a high probability that something will be wrong. But that's what MY64 seems to excel in. They actually seem to have some sort of quality control because they don't seem to have too many problems with the few that I have. Whereas other brands like Scale Mini is a disaster in most cases and DMH also has some problems going on with their QC. So it's kind of hard to compare it to these photos because obviously it's a different car as far as the livery goes. In fact, the, it also looks like this is a different shape. But maybe the nose was crashed at some point in time and then this has an oval shape. I don't know. Don't know. But this does match the two vents here. Some, some GTOs have three vents there. It has rear pipes. This is really the only photo that we can really say does this model look like. wheels, there's the vents, some details there, a little fill filler, and uh, red, white, and green stripes, so I guess it looks good. Let's take a closer look. Got a different light angle here. Alright, starting with the wheels. These are very typical wheels of uh, these resin 250 GTOs. They're photo etched metal spokes and they're bent like a cone. And uh, they might actually have two sets of spokes, so I'm going to have to zoom in here, but the camera's going to shake. My phone is on a suspension spring mount, so it tends to wobble. Okay, uh, moving around, yep, there's two stacks of spokes. You can see one set behind the other as I move around. There's also a round disc brakes. Uh, well, maybe it's a drum brake in the rear back in 19, the early 60s. I'm sure the thing must have disc brakes up front. There's some sort of round thing going on behind those spokes. The tires are great. They're ballooning out like real tires would. Um, the stance seems pretty good. The tires seem to be sunken underneath the fenders a little bit. And you don't see tread blocks on the side because that's the way street tires are. So they don't look like truck tires with big knobbies. Uh, you'll see these black vents. They are pretty deep. They're, I'm guessing, painted there. This is, a, I think, a photo etched piece with some amber colored uh, resin on it. The panel gaps are quite tight, tighter than a toothpick. This is some sort of funky photo etched looking door handle. And it's really small in the photographs, so I guess that's pretty good. So this is literally sticking out like a finger pull or something. You have the racing windows, so it's literally two pieces stacked up. So they're like sliding windows of the real car. And then this has a photo etched piece for the chrome work. This is a maybe a passive vent, yeah, looking at that rear photo, yeah, I would say that is a vent. And then this might be a real vent. I think that's actually 
No, actually, maybe it's bottom and out. I thought it was going to touch the tire. But no, it seems to be... Maybe there's a piece of black in there. It's hard to say. You know what? Actually, hold on. Where's my flashlight? No, see, so you can see the tread through that vent. So that's a real vent. And the treads look old school. So that's good. They don't look like modern tires. I guess we're going to the back this time. So the exhaust pipes are really round. I think they're machined pieces of aluminum tubing. I don't think you can mold plastic that that precisely. And also, I mean, I can, they're hollow. I mean, I'm sticking a toothpick in them. So that's what makes me think uh, they're aluminum. And some sort of bent metal piece there. So maybe it's a diffuser and maybe indication of the fuel tank there with some straps. The tail lights here, three things sticking, stacked up. O orange, red, red. Maybe that's a reflector. There's no license plate on this thing because I guess it's in racing mode. But uh, it has the indication of lights. They're three dimensional. They look like ball bearings on photo etched pieces to me. Uh, all right, let's see if this side makes sure everything's good. So now I think we have a different hatch on this side besides that vent, but the fuel filler was there, that photo etch piece. I do feel like that could have been molded instead of just a flat piece of metal. I would have preferred that. Um, everything looks good though. Okay, let's go to the top rear. Just mix up the sequence this time. So it looks like we have a round photo etch piece for the trunk li lid. Uh, then the panel gap seems all right. And look at the stripes. It's actually going into the panel gap. And I don't see any wrinkliness. So I think this is a, a decal that they clear coated over. I don't feel, I do feel maybe a ridge right there. But anyways, it looks super smooth. You see this rectangular or white? That's my LED light above us. It is a pretty straight edge because this is a really smooth paint job. You can see this giant fuel tank here. It also has some struts, metal rods or something holding it in place. Some sort of, oh, a tube running from that. This could be a fuel filler door as well. And that's the fuel filler tube. That's a nice detail. So the rear window has this uh, you know, clear plastic with the photo etch piece with the chrome again. The roof, well, let's look at these stripes here. They look pretty straight, just depends how I hold the model. I think, are they aligned all right? I'm looking at it with my own eyes now, if it loses focus, sorry. It looks pretty good to my, my naked eye. Hopefully the camera will show it as straight. I don't know. Maybe it is off. Maybe that rear one's off. It's possible this is off, the rear one. Let's just hide that. See, that looks straight pretty straight to me. Let's hide this. But that looks... No, maybe the rear is a little bit higher than the... Alright, well anyways, I can't do it better. I'm gonna live with it. You can see the wiper blades, there's two of them. They're chromed, they're bent 90 degrees perpendicular so, to the windscreen. The windscreen itself has the photo etch piece around it. And uh, Let's continue on the outside. You can see the fluid ejectors there in front of the the little silver dots are probably for wiper fluid. And then look at these little leather straps they simulated for to hold the hood down. I think those are photo etched metal pieces that they painted the recesses like a, that tan color. And then you have some sort of hood levers, I guess. So maybe that's locked and then if you swing it over there it opens or something. But yeah, this this is actually vertical, you know? So there's one, two, three pieces in that little arrangement. And then you can see grills underneath this, like, clear scoop. Scooping in air, and maybe those are air, air filters, but I don't know for sure. And there's a big power belch here. Yeah, look at that, right? And then again, the, the stripe looks pretty good. It's, there's a panel gap going through it, you know? It's not an air pocket that you see on an NO64 or a Tarmac Works. This, this is literally a groove. So I think it's quite realistic looking. The Ferrari badge, I guess the, it's appropriate in size, seems okay. The top scoops are blanked off. There's literally some metal pieces 
painted the same body color. And I guess that probably happened at this particular event where it placed uh, fourth place, by the way. There's 200 of this livery. Press version. All right, yeah, we already saw that. So if you want a model of the very first 250 GTO, you have 198 more chances to find one. Okay, so clear headlight covers. Sorry, I keep losing focus. Let me hit that again. There we go. And then you can see what looks like a very realistic light bucket back there with the light bulb and it has like a clear uh, domed surface as well and then this little chrome piece holding the light cover has little dots for screw bolts or whatever these are just silver uh, I don't know if that's realistic or not because they're not on that front photo but that was a different time also, the front photo doesn't have these things here. They're just open, and there's fog lights in front of them. So at some point in time, I have to assume it had these lights in here. And so these are domed clear plastic or resin on top of what is probably a photo metal piece. It's very shiny. And so you can see the chrome surround of this oval uh, grill, and you can see the radiator back there. That's like a photo piece of metal, and it's pretty far back there. This toothpick. Yeah, that's pretty far in there. Alright, and then you can see the three vents on the bottom, and those are molded in place and painted black. Now you can also see the quick uh, jack stand hooks, I guess you would call those. How do they're not in the back, though? How do they jack up the back of this car in a race? I don't know. Hmm. Or the side, even. I don't know. Okay, I will say there might be a blemish right here. What is this? Yeah, hopefully that's just some grime. Instead of, well, maybe it is. I don't know. Well, it's a little bit dark. All right. So I guess the only outside issue is possibly maybe that this set of stripes might be a little bit too much that way. But at least the thing on it is centered in the white stripe. So. Again, it might be in line. Let's look at it this way. Yeah, I do feel like that rear stripe might be a little bit off. Oh well. Can't get it all perfect, I guess. Uh, I guess now we got to try to look at the interior. And we obviously have blue seats and a black dashboard. A wooden steering wheel, the rear view mirrors, a photo etch piece. Uh, there's a blue seat belt hanging out there, and it's actually wrapped over the seat belt. It's not a decal. I think it's literally floating, like maybe it's a piece of paper. And then we have a gutted uh, silver interior. I assume it's an aluminum body or something, but I could be wrong. And look at the shifter. It's really nice. It's uh, not like a hot dog. It's more like a rod with a shifter knob on top of it. And then the shifter gate, I have to assume that must be a piece of photo etched metal. It has recesses and bolt details. Sorry for the shakiness. Again, it's a sprung phone mount. This is a unique dashboard. It's like they ripped off the top half of it and those are all the electronic circuits or fuses. So that's interesting. I think I might even see some of that in that top view of the number 32 livery. So that's maybe the, I don't know, easier access to get into there. Uh, yeah, so both seat belts, or lap belts there. Look at the door panels. I feel like that might be gutted. Let me get that flashlight back down here. Let me resituate the camera lower. Maybe like that. Hit focus. And let's see if I can get the, the light in there. So low headrest, if actually no headrest, a whiplash is going to happen in the 60s. I think that door is re like that's just the openness of the door. They ripped the door panel off, and that's what that black is. It's just air, a void of the door. Uh, all right, no roll cage, you know, in this car. It's just a gutted interior, I guess. I think it probably had a hand beaten aluminum body. Oh, there's probably gas pedals. Let's see if we can find them.
Well, there's a Ferrari horse there in the steering wheel. Oh, wow, I don't think there are gas pedals. I think I had them in a different uh, view. Oh, no, they are there. Yeah, you can see them through the gaps of the steering wheel. Yeah, unfortunately this angle, but the clutch pedal, the gas pedal, I think they're there. Uh, that might be a better view. I wonder if they're etched and like cross-drilled. This is really hard to do. A little glare on the window. Eh, sorry, I can't show it. But they're there. And I'll never see them again, because I, I don't look at my models like this, usually, at four times magnification. Alright. So, my first GTO, sadly, I lost a wiper blade pulling it out for these reviews. It's just, I don't know where it could have gone, but it wasn't glued in well enough. So, this is a uh, chassis 4293, racing car number 24. What race, I have no idea. This was made by, I think, SCM, which I don't think this does models anymore. This is also an MY64, uh, third place at the Nürburgring in 1963. You will see that all three of these are different from each other. Uh, this one has the open vents and a prancing horse up front. This one also has a hood scoop and a windshield blocker. This has uh, the ducktail. This has side pipes. These two have rear pipes, but this has a ducktail that doesn't. This has three side vents, that has two. This has the open vents up front, this does not. This hood is louvered, this one is smooth. So they're all unique, you know. Uh, these are all, I believe, hand-beaten bodies uh, back then. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think they only made 36 Ferrari 250 GTOs, and they can all be accounted for. So there's a website showing the history of each of these chassis, it seems. And I think that's why these models uh, look realistic. They actually have a lot of photos to work off of. I, I think it's really cool that this dashboard is unique. Even that was molded uniquely. So yeah, that also has a tube running from that door into the bottom. I don't know if this one does, but this has a scoop or air vent on the back as well. And then there's something on the roof of that thing. So yeah, it's cool. Even though they're all 250 GTOs, they're actually all unique, except for the wheels and tires are pretty much identical, but that's fine. Alright, well, you could have paused the video by now and compared the things yourself. So, if you're new to collecting by the time you see this video, I have a suspicion you'll be able to buy that model in the future. There's no branding on any of these nameplates, so... I'm pretty sure that just gonna eventually MI64 is gonna vanish, and then they're gonna create some other obscure name, maybe TD 6.4, and then they're just gonna come out with all the cars again. That's just my suspicion. But if I was running a business and my goal is to sell products, that's what I would do. They're just trying to convince people that you should buy this now because there's only 200 of them. But uh, me, I think it would just be smart for businesses to sell millions of whatever they can do. Limited edition stuff. That's just uh, silly, I think. You just appreciate your stuff. Don't buy toys for investment purposes. That makes no sense at all. Buy gold. I say that. Uh, toys are, well, models or whatever. You know, just enjoy them. And if you're lucky, you'll make money. But that's what I hate about Hot Wheels and Mattel and how they breed a new generation of children to be greedy and hoard Hot Wheels that should be a dollar. And then fools pay a hundred dollars for them. This was less than a hundred dollars by the way. And uh, I would have to say this looks more realistic than a Hot Wheels. Alright, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next resin video.